stress. It is a silent killer. Sometimes it's a pretty loud killer, actually. We've got busy lives. We've got families. We've got kids. We're breaking up with our girlfriends or boyfriends. The boss is being a bit of an ass and he's coming down on us. We hate our job. We're feeling mediocre. We wake up in the morning going, why don't I have enough money in my life? I should be making more. I should be more successful. Then you go on a Facebook and you're looking at your friends' feeds and they're like, oh, they're all smiling and happy. And you go, they're so happy. Why aren't I happy? Stress. It's a killer, right? We've all been there. So how do we handle this stress? How do we reduce this stress so we can just chill the F out a little bit? Well, today we're going to come up with five ways to handle your stress. And to do that, We're talking to a biohacking coach. He's actually an executive wellness coach. He's a specialist in functional medicine and nutritional science. It's a big welcome, welcome, I should say, to Anthony DeClemente. How are you, Anthony? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Now, you don't look stressed. You have a big smile on your face. You're like looking pretty cool and pretty pretty chilled. Are you a stressful guy or are you you pretty good? You know, I used to be be one of those people that... um, I was pretty stressed. I was anxious, even, even depressed at times. And um, other people didn't know it because I was pretty good at keeping it in and not, and not sharing what I was dealing with internally. But fortunately today, those, those feelings, uh, although they are occasionally part of the human condition, are fewer and further between. Nice. That's awesome. That's because you've discovered ways on how to manage your stress, right? Yeah, that's been a big part of it. Because a lot of people say, oh, you know, how to kill stress or how to eliminate stress. I don't actually think it's, unless you're a Buddhist monk sitting in the mountains 365 days of the year, I don't, I don't believe that it's possible to completely relieve your stress. I think, and I don't think that, in my opinion, I don't think that that's healthy, right? You want a little bit of cortisol coming in for the fight or flight hormone. So I want to be very particular with my words here. This is how to manage our stress. Or do you, do you slightly disagree with me in terms of you can... I completely agree with you. I, I think, in fact, it's in, the important distinction to make is the difference between acute stressors and, and particularly acute stressors that we intentionally bring upon ourselves for the purpose of initiating an adaptive response in the body. So like you were talking earlier offline about some of your workouts that you do that are pretty hard where you're, you're, you're sweating like you said, a pedophile on a playground. Yeah, and apologies that for is, that joke. <laughs> what's up? I said apologies for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> any pedophiles listening. <laughs> and, uh, but, but that is an intentional acute stressor that we bring on our body and we, and we do it because breaking down our muscles makes us stronger because challenging our cardiovascular system makes it stronger. And um, what happens is a lot of people find themselves under a different kind of stress, which is chronic stress. They hate their job. They're unhappy. They're not sleeping enough. They're not getting their body the nutrients that it needs. And, and they're two very different things. Um, acute stress particularly acute stress that doesn't exceed our body's ability to recover is a good thing. Chronic stress, not so much. So the stress that I uh, alluded to when, uh, when I was just introducing you just now, um, the mental stress, you know, like I don't make enough money. I'm not so successful. I'll never be, you know, I don't like how I look things that, that all human beings suffer from on occasion. Are there indeed hacks, if you like, or indeed things other than just simply meditating to be able to reduce the power of those thoughts or, or even eliminate them? Yeah, there are. There are some things that are, that are very powerful. And I'll real quickly just mention a few and then we can dig into them in yeah. more detail or the ones that catch your, catch your attention um, we can explore. Yes. So the first is, is dietary related. Um, making sure that we're eating food, the, the same stuff that people have probably heard 10,000 times if they've been on the internet and read a blog. But I, I really do believe that, that paleo has a good foundational framework for most people. If we're going to speak in terms of general diets, I think paleo is a good starting place. Now, when it comes to optimizing your physical and mental health, Generic programs tend to yield generic results. We all are uniquely individual. We have different health issues going on. We have different genetic blueprints. If you really want to maximize your energy, your body composition, your mental clarity, you need a diet that's customized for you. And, um, and, and it's not going to be found by trying 20 different 
diet books at Barnes and Noble. Um, but staying away from the problem foods is probably the number one nutritional recommendation that I could make for food. There's been a lot of studies where they've taken people and they've been able to actually initiate uh, schizophrenia, bipolar disorders, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, just by feeding people foods like dairy and grains and gluten. Yeah, it's 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 insane. It's insanity, actually. And 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 you're right. People, you know, initially, if they might be listening to you, going, "Oh yeah, all right, just got to eat better." Well, yeah, you just got to eat better because guess what? You might be having dairy, and you might be um, and and you might be eating gluten. And you might be going, oh, yeah, I've read that crap about gluten and dairy or that's a whatever, blah, blah. But that actually might be disrupting your sleep, which is causing you to put on weight. It might actually be slowly causing you cancer, which in 10 or 20 years from now, you're going to die from or you're going to suffer from. And it's all because you ridiculed the fact that maybe it's dairy or gluten. Now, I'm not just saying dairy or gluten. It could be anything. It could be any type of food, right? That's why it's important to get tests. Like, for example, I took, what did I do? I did... I took the 23andMe DNA test and then I took another one, a genet another genetics test and it showed me that I was actually fine with dairy and it told me that I was okay drinking coffee as well. Whereas other people, their genetic makeup is like they should absolutely avoid dairy and absolutely avoid makeup. And this is the, uh, sorry, um, what did I say? I said makeup, dairy and... Avoid makeup. <laughs> <laughs> um, the point is, is that the way the world is going, it, it's very much not, it's, this one diet fits all is ending. Like it's, it's, it's going out the window. And in the next five, 10, 20 years, what you're going to see, I'm convinced of it, uh, is, is very much personalized health where we're going to figure out exactly what foods, even though 99% of people might say, eat that it's healthy. It might not be healthy for you. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a lot of what, what we're doing now in our, in our coaching program. And part of the reason that I'm now trying to put as much stuff out there as possible, because so many people are realizing that they need this and there's not even an, like, we don't have enough bandwidth to help all of these people by customizing everything for them and getting them. And it's, because it's not just diet, you know, it's your nutrition, your movement, your stress management, your sleep, your supplements, your hydration, oxygenation, light mindset habits. Then if you have any underlying health issues like gut dysfunction or hypothyroidism or adrenal fatigue or any of that, like those need to be addressed too. Um, and, and there's so many moving pieces, like just to break down one little nuance, you mentioned coffee, right? And like the 23andMe test, which is a great test. What 23andMe looks at is whether you're a fast or a slow metabolizer of caffeine. Right. And that's right. like, oh, okay, you're good to drink coffee. What they don't address and what a lot of people overlook, and just because we're, we're diving deeper into how foods can affect our energy and our mental clarity and our stress and things like that, is that coffee, so Cyrex Laboratories did something called a gluten cross reactivity sensitivity analysis. And they looked up at all the foods that mimicked the effect that gluten has on the body. So you have people that are sensitive to gluten, right? They avoid gluten, but there's also a lot of foods that are gluten cross reactants. Dairy, a lot of foods in the dairy category being some of the main ones. A lot of grains being some of the main ones. But, but what do you think the number one gluten cross reactant was? What is it? Coffee. So even if you are a fast metabolizer of caffeine and you're fine in that regard, if you have a sensitivity to gluten and you're drinking coffee every morning, you could be making yourself anxious, stressed, and adversely affecting your health. And that's one of like a thousand different examples. So we started off with uh, this interview talking about ways to manage stress. And now we're stressing all the coffee drinkers. And now we're stressing everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing I say to people is like, don't take away my coffee. Don't you dare. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to take away your coffee. I'll give you an alternative that's even better and you'll feel so good you'll, you won't even look back. But we, yeah. we test it for 28 days. I tell everyone, let's, let's just test it. It's worth testing. And we do an elimination diet where we remove the possible problematic foods. And then we strategically reintroduce them because it's, it's more effective than any of the analysis or poking or prodding that you can have done to you is actually paying attention to the physiological responses that your body has when you've eliminated a food and then you reintroduce it. Okay. We're talking to Anthony De Clementi, uh, who has a, uh, uh, a book coming out on biohacking and we're just about to get into five ways to handle your stress. Obviously the first one is this stay away from, from bad food, but we're going to dig a little deeper now. What's the book that you've got coming out, Anthony? Yeah, it's uh, the biohackers guide to upgraded energy and focus. It's an uncommon system to rapidly optimize physical and mental performance. All right. I like that. The biohackers guide sounds very uh, biblical. I like it. It's huge. <laughs> 
All right, so let's get into this now. Um, let's do five ways to handle your stress. Now, we'll just assume the first one there was, was make sure you're monitoring your nutrition and your diet, staying away from bad food, uh, obviously. Let's, uh, let's move into something else. What's, a, what, what's another way to handle our stress here? Yeah. Uh, another one is movement, moving the body and sweating every day. If you want to boil it down to the simplest form is, is doing something that is uh, a part of your daily routine that is sustainable. So not jumping into an extreme workout program where you know you can maybe keep it up for 60 days, but then your body's going to fall apart and you're going to be achy and, and you're not going to be able to work out for two months, but something that is sustainable, something that is fun and something that gets you sweating and breathing and oxygenating your body. Um, hyper oxygenation is, is huge for managing stress. Many times people have never learned to breathe properly. They're chest breathers and they haven't, um, they haven't practiced deep diaphragmatic breathing. And one of my favorite techniques for improving that is the Wim Hof method, which is a combination of, of deep breathing exercises and, um, cold thermogenesis. Wim's, Wim's one of the people that, uh, we interviewed in our expert series coming up great guy. He's got like 20 something plus world records for like all sorts of crazy stuff that no sane human would want to do. Um, like longest time in an ice bath and like longest time swimming underneath a frozen lake and like all sorts of things like that. But his method is very powerful and has helped a lot of clients with stress. Um, and, and it involves cold showers and deep breathing and things that, um, those acute stressors, like we talked about that initiate a, an adaptive response in the body. Okay. So you talked about moving the body, which is simply actually doing exercise. I think that's pretty much a no brainer. Everyone knows, knows to do that, even if not everyone does it. Um, but this is interesting, the deep breathing and the cold thermogenesis. Let's just, let's just explore that just a little bit. Um, it's funny years ago, I listened to an audio book from Tony Robbins, the motivational coach. And he told me that he lost, sorry, when I say he told me, he told me as the listener, you know, in his program, um, that he lost 30 pounds in 30 days once back in the eighties. I think it was <clears throat> back in the early eighties, just before he actually became Tony Robbins simply by breathing. And he, and he did this breathing technique where it was, <clears throat> you'd breathe in very heavily, like, and you kind of count it in and then you breathe it out for, I think two or three times longer than the time that it took you to breathe in. So for example, I might be butchering this, but you might breathe in for seven seconds, like, and then you breathe out for say 21 seconds, like, <laughs> I won't do the whole thing, but you get the idea right now. Even me just showing you that now, Anthony, I'm like feeling, a, I'm feeling more energized. Like I'm feeling, like, uh, not maybe energized is not the word. I'm feeling a change in my physiology simply by just doing that one example breath. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I went to a Tony Robbins uh, seminar um, in Dallas, Texas in 2014, he, uh, he talks, has this thing called priming where you wake up in the morning and he says for 60 seconds, you sit on the end of your bed and you put your, you sort of make your two uh, hands a fist and you move them up like you're doing a shoulder press in the gym. And you do that for 30 seconds, like, <laughs> and, and for 60, you're wanting to quit after like 20 seconds. You're like, man, this is tiring. And then after, but if you do it for 60 seconds, all of a sudden you get up and your, your whole day uh, has started. So is that just on the breathing part? We'll get to the cold water in a second, but is that what you mean by deep breathing, being able to relieve your stress or something similar to that? Yeah, that, that's a part of it. Um, there's a lot of different methods. So I've, I've done, I, you know, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan as well. And I've done some of the, the priming. And I like that particularly, he, does, he teaches it now where you're almost slamming your upper arms and elbows into your sides to stimulate the lymphatic system and, and, and detoxify. Um, but I've done that. And I've used that with clients. I've used the, you know, breathing in for seven seconds, breathing out for longer, 10 seconds or so. Um, but the Wim Hof method is, uh, that has an effect that supersedes every other breathing technique that I've done. And it involves, um, you're doing a static, you're, you're, you're hyper oxygenating. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to bite on his method too much, but if, if you go to like Wim Hof method or innerfire.nl, you, you can learn more about it. Um, I'm doing a great job of like, I, I promote everybody else's stuff, <laughs> Talk about my own. Uh -huh. uh, but, but it, it, it's amazing. It's helped a lot of people. And I've had, I've had clients come to me with chronic fatigue, stress, 
they, they, they start doing Wim Hof and some of our other changes. And they're like, within a guy just messaged me within a week, he was feeling better than he's felt in two years. So what Wim has you do is you'll breathe deep for say like 30, 35 breaths. The idea is you start getting really lightheaded and tingly. You'll start getting that uncomfortable feeling that you mentioned earlier. And it's different for everybody. For some people, it's 20 breaths. For some people, it's 60 breaths. The key is breathing until you start getting to that point. And then you remit from breathing. You let the breath go and you hold it as long as you possibly can. Usually the first round is no good. It's kind of like just a warm up. But then the second round, I have a guy that started a week ago and he, he, he did almost three minutes with a static breath hold and that's after exhaling. So you basically like, it's taken as much as you can and then you let it go. And then you take in as much as you can and then you let it go. And on the last one, take in as much as you can, you let it go and then you hold your breath. And he went for almost three minutes and it was like his second or third time doing it. Wow. So it's breathing in as much as you can. And is it holding your breath for as long as you can and then letting it go? Is that essentially what it is? So you're breathing afterwards. In. So yeah. So how Wim taught it to me is you hyper oxygenate. So you, you take so give, me, give us an example. Show me how you do it now. So put the, I don't know if you guys can see, but yeah. you, just, you breathe in, you take in as much as you can and you imagine your belly expanding in all four directions. You got to okay. get out of your chest and down into your belly. Okay. You, as much as you can and then just like if you imagine pulling uh, the cap on an air mattress you just let it go a little bit and then as much as you can let it go not breathing out just letting it go and then and my mind is down in my belly literally feeling it expand like a balloon and then just let it go and then again take in as much as you can and then just let it go and then as much as you can and then let it go more in, down into your belly. Feel your belly expand like a balloon. As guys, we're so used to trying to stand up and flex our stomach and look like we got a six pack. It interferes with deep diaphragmatic breathing. So we got to kind of let that go and be all right, looking like we got a little bit of a Buddha belly while we're doing it. And but, why uh, are we not breathing? Why are we not exhaling all of it? Why are we only doing a little exhale? So my understanding, and, and again, I think Wim explains this a lot more in his course, and he goes through, he takes people from, all right, there's no way I could, I could possibly hold my breath for more than 30 seconds. There's no way I could even imagine doing a cold shower to people by the end of his course, they're able to do superhuman amounts of cold exposure. They're able to hold their breath for two, three, four, five plus minutes. Um, and the idea is you hyper oxygenate. So you're focusing on the in breath. You're trying to flood your cells with oxygen and get it deep into the brainstem and different parts of your body. And you'll feel the physiological changes. You almost get like tingling in your hands and like lightheaded. And it's, it's, it's a very perceptible phase shift that takes place. So you get this hyper oxygenation and then you hold your breath and you're basically depriving your body of oxygen as long as you possibly can. So similar to the training that people that like free divers do, where they're, um, they're training their body to operate in a low oxygen environment. And then when you can't hold it anymore, some people even talk about seeing like a tunnel coming where they're like, I'm going to black out if I keep holding my breath. And then you take a deep breath again and you hold that for 15 seconds to again, allow your body to like partition and utilize that oxygen, get it to everywhere that's needing it because you've, you've deprived yourself of oxygen and it improves your oxygen utilization. A lot of pathogens in the body, so bacteria, um, viruses, parasites, they're anaerobic. They do well in a, a low oxygen environment. That's why when people are dealing with Lyme disease and parasites and candida, they usually have hypercoagulation. Their circulation is compromised. Their oxygen levels are low. If you use like a blood oxometer and you see what's this person's blood, blood O2 saturation, it's low because these, these pathogens create an environment where they thrive. When you hyper oxygenate, when you engage in more cardiovascular activity, it creates an environment that is oxygen rich. Your O2 blood saturation is higher and these organisms are unable to thrive. And, and of course, our stress levels go down as well. Like the, and the stress is, you're, you're much less stressed. I mean, people would do just from one round of Wim Hof or deep breathing, people could do it right now. If, if they set the timer for two minutes and just breathe deep each time, focusing on their belly, expanding in all four directions, in through the nose, that also helps to initiate the body's relaxation response. And then you can go out through the nose or out through the mouth, whatever's more comfortable. After two minutes, they will notice a big difference and a big improvement in, okay. in their stress levels.
Okay, let's move on to cold showers now. Uh, let me give you my cold water, my cold shower protocol. This is what I do uh, every day uh, after I come back from the gym. I will take a shower and I will start off with uh, hot or, or warm, if you like. And I actually do a lot of my best thinking in the shower. So I like to take long showers. People, I know people are like, oh, I'll get a quick shower. But I actually do really good thinking in the shower. And I have these aqua notes. Um, which I have stuck to the, to the wall of my shower. It's this thing where you can, you know, you've got a waterproof pencil and waterproof paper. And so when I get ideas, I'll write in it. So sometimes I'll, I'll take a 20 minute shower. I, I like that. People I in California are like going, Oh my God, we've got a water shortage and all this kind of stuff. They're like doing the face palm slap at the moment, but I don't care. <laughs> I like it. And it's, it gives me good. It gives me good clarity about business types, things and things in my life. I like that. But what I will do is for the last, 30 seconds I'll turn it on to, to cold so uh, it'll be it won't be hot it'll be warm for a while and then for the last 30 seconds I'll turn it on to cold like just literally cold and I will like <sighs> and I'll say to myself come on James toughen up toughen up or, or, or words of, of, of encouragement and then I'll get out and then I feel amazing like I'm like because I have that cold on me I'm like moving around I'm energetic and I don't feel tired like because hot water and steam can actually tire you out now I'm sure that's not perfect. Um, my friend Ben Greenfield, who's a fellow biohack, biohacker, told me um, to do hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold for like three minutes. So you go 20 minutes hot, 20 minutes cold, 20 minutes hot, cold. And the difference that that elicits in your body temperature is what gives you the energy and which helps you metab uh, burn fat. It's good for fat loss. I've tried that. Uh, in fact, I started doing it when I was living in Bogota, Colombia, and that's, it was pretty cold there, and, and that was nasty, man. It was just really, really cold. It's a lot different doing a lot different doing a cold shower in California than it is in like the mountains of Bogota, Colombia. Let me tell you. Um, anyway, what are your thoughts on cold showers? What's the right way to do it? Yeah, um, the right way is something that you can do every day. Cool. Well, I'm doing it the right way then because I'm doing it the right way. If okay. 30 seconds every day is, is what's manageable and what you feel like is going to allow you to stick with it, then do that. If it's like, if there's an elaborate routine, that's 50% more effective, but you're only going to do it a couple of times. It doesn't really matter. Um, well said. And, and the way that the way that you're doing it is very similar to the way that I do it. The, the only, um, the only other thing is, you know, I make a, a point to consciously relax and let all tension go from my body as huh. much as possible. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, you can do it where you're, you're fighting through it, but the breathing, I use that as my time to hyper oxygenate in the morning too. So I'm, I'm breathing similar to you are just as much as I can take in and then let it go similar to what we just did in that, in that Wim Hof example. And I'm lifting up my arms. I'm getting the lymphs, letting it run down the radial and ulnar uh, arteries and the wrists, getting that area to kind of like cool off. Um, down the sides, down the back, all areas of the body. Um, and I go until I kind of don't feel like it anymore. It's usually like 30 seconds to a minute tops. And you could but go are, are you doing it though? Like are you just going in and that's all you're doing or are you starting off with warm like me? Oh, yeah. I take a normal shower first. Okay. Yeah. I take a normal shower and get cleaned up and then I do that. But that's, that's not the only cold thermogenesis I do. I've got a client picking me up you know, after our interview and we're going to Lake Michigan, which is like 40, 50 degrees right now. And we're going to go jump in there and I'll spend like seven minutes in the lake. Yeah. So it's the, the cold shower is great. It starts the day. It gets me energized. The lake is where I really feel when you're, when you're connected to the, the negative ions and, and the, the grounding benefits of a natural body of water in the earth, there's, um, there's something you get that you don't get from ice baths. You don't get from cold showers. You don't get from cryo chambers. It's, it's very powerful. And like, I'm actually the, the, the neurotransmitter dump that takes place is better than any drug that I've ever tried. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's like also we're walking barefoot on grass versus like wearing shoes, right? You get the electric, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a, there's a pulse of the earth, a magnetic energetic pulse in the earth that you only get if you're walking barefoot on the, uh, on the, on the ground, right? Yeah. And, and that's something that people are just starting to get a little bit more aware of is, is 
how electrons and things on a quantum level affect us energetically and, um, and reconnecting with the earth, connecting with natural bodies of water, um, particularly when, when, you can, when you can do so in a cold body of water. And then it, that also primes the plasma for absorbing more photonic light energy. When you come out and you got the sun and um, you feel great afterwards, less stress, your mood is elevated. It's, it's awesome. Interestingly enough, I know you're saying people are only starting to realize that, but I can make reference to two movies, one in the 80s and one in the 90s, where they actually uh, kind of jo jokingly referenced this. Um, one of them was the movie Die Hard with Bruce Willis, where in the beginning <laughs> of the movie, the guy on the plane is like, take your shoes off and rub your, 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 your feet on the, on, the, on the floor. It'll help. And so Bruce Willis does it, and that's the reason why he has to spend the rest of the movie running around barefoot over oh, that's awesome. trying to kill all the terrorists. And then there's another scene in um, uh, Pretty Woman where Julia Roberts' character tells Richard Gere's character to take his shoes off and walk on the grass. And when he's kind of towards the end of the movie after he's broken up with her or they've separated, now he's like putting his feet on the grass and he's kind of like shaking his head, smiling as if to suggest, oh yeah, she's right. So anyway, there you go. There's two weird references to an 80s. Those are, those are great references. No, those aren't weird at all. John, John McLean's my homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So we've got uh, biohacking, five ways to handle your stress. We're talking to Anthony De Clementi. We're on the Homewood stretch here. Anthony is an executive wellness coach. He's a specialist in functional medicine and nutritional science with a great book, The Biohacker's Guide coming out. Uh, later on, let me finish the title. Of that I, I'm just shortening it, calling it the Biohacker's Guide. But the rest of the title is, is what, Anthony? Yeah, it's the Biohacker's Guide to Upgraded Energy and Focus. And then we've got a, an even more wordy subtitle, which is an uncommon system to rapidly optimize physical and mental performance. Nice one. Okay, so stay away from food, move the body, deep breathing, cold showers. Stop eating. Connect to negative uh, uh, grounding of the earth. That means like going out and even lying on grass, uh, just walking barefoot on grass to get the magnetic pulse of the earth will relieve your stress. What else we got? Let's do a couple more here, Anthony, and we'll wrap this yeah. up. Yeah. Um, and just to clarify with the food, it's, it's more so what you don't eat than what you do eat. So staying away from the big five, which is dairy, grains, alcohol, sugar, and uh, genetically modified foods. Genetically modified foods, the three most common being corn, soy, canola oil, and their derivatives. So that's just a little bit more info. So people aren't like, well, what foods am I supposed to stay away from? Um, another big one is, is the right supplements for you. So there are Here's just two examples that will give a little bit of context to it, but there's um, a condition, a genetic, a genetic mutation called MTHFR um, that about 35 to 55% of the population has, and it involves a, a, an inability to effectively process B vitamins into their bioactive form. Well, at least we, they, the individuals that have MTHFR, of which I am one, they, they still process, but they process less efficiently. And then that can cause many downstream effects where they're producing lower levels of serotonin, lower levels of dopamine. They don't detoxify as well. And these individuals, if they don't make efforts to get the bioactive forms of those B vitamins, particularly B6, B12, uh, B2, and um, it, it can lead to many health issues, anxiety, stress, panic attacks. Um, so what I do is I always make sure that if someone is, is showing signs that they may be MTHFR, I have some specific supplements that I'll have them try out rather than even testing because the testing can be somewhat expensive. I'll say, try this supplement for a month. If you feel less stressed, less anxious, if, if it's someone that's having panic attacks, if their panic attacks go down, then we know that it's, that's a possibility. Um, and we can usually achieve some pretty powerful results by getting them to eat more uh, DHA, which is like a, an omega-3 fatty acid in cold water fatty fish. So we get more DHA to their brain. We get them the right B vitamins. And we uh, get them some uh, bioactive magnesium, like magnesium glyconates or, um, or natural calm. And I know, I know someone recently was just bashing natural calm because they tested for some arsenic and in, in, the, in the product. But I'm not I want worried. you to keep talking on that. I'm just going to go and get my supplements and I'm going to show it to you. So just go over. Let me ask you a question for you to answer. So when I'm not here, it's not weird. Sure. Um, uh, when you're saying eat more DHA, you're essentially saying fish oil, right? Omega threes and omega omega sixes. I'm I'm more a fan of eating food in its whole form. So fish oil is uh, a very distant second, if you can even call it second, to eating to eating wild caught cold water fatty fish. Um, 
And there, you know, most people, when I, when I recommend eating more fish, they're hesitant, they, they don't like fish. And I get that, you know, most people don't like vegetables either. And if you gave me the choice, you said, Anthony, you would feel exactly the same. You would look exactly the same uh, if, if you ate pizza and burgers or fish and vegetables, which would you choose? I'd probably choose the pizza and burgers. But the truth is we don't feel the same. We don't look the same. It doesn't affect our body the same. It doesn't affect us on a cellular level the same way. So it, our food is our medicine and eating fish, particularly wild caught fish in its whole food form produces vastly superior benefits compared to taking it in supplement form. So if I, I have a Trader Joe's supermarket down the road from me here in West Hollywood off Sunset Boulevard and um, I'll go in there and there's a massive difference between wild caught salmon and farm raised salmon. I can see it in the color of the food. So I always get, I think it's called Nova Scotia caught wild caught uh, salmon, which is sealed in a, in a, you know, like a plastic strip. Is that, uh, is that, uh, I, I mean, I'll, I know that's, that's far better than the farm raised one, but I, is that okay? Or you, when you saying like f eating fish in its hole, are you saying even because that's packaged that that's in, that's inferior quality? No, that's good. I mean, okay, good, we, good. Could, we could get, we could get nuts with all this stuff and then you're very quickly, you're eating nothing and you're meditating all day. Um, <laughs> so that's so good. Like, as long as it's wild caught fish, yeah, right? Yeah. That's what, that's what you're looking for. And, and, and I do take, I do supplement with DHA as well. In addition to, so I eat a lot of fish. I try to eat fish maybe three or four times a week. Um, I, I balance it out between like a wild caught salmon, which is more of a predatory fish and then smaller fish, which are lower on the food chain and therefore contain lower amounts of heavy metals like mercury. Okay. The higher up the fish are on the food chain, the more, the more toxins that they, they carry with them. Now I have a, a, a vitamin here, a supplement. I'm going to show you some of my supplements here, but to start off with, this is a vitamin D3. I'm not sure if you can see that, which is 10,000 IU. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, am I doing the right thing by taking this supplement? You live in you live in California. Yes, I would try to. You're always better getting your your vitamin D from the sun. Absolutely, as it, as so as in the skin. Um, yeah, some of the things that can happen with taking it in supplement. I, I do recommend taking it in supplemental form, but you you do want to make sure that you're getting plenty of vitamin A in your diet. You also want to make sure you're getting plenty of vitamin K in your diet. Um, there was a study recently that showed people that took the highest amounts of vitamin D actually had lower or actually had higher mortality rates than people that had lower blood values of vitamin D. And everyone was scratching their head because there's research coming out every day on vitamin D supplementation and the benefits in terms of longevity and anti-cancer. Why is this study showing that people that had the highest blood serum levels of vitamin D passing away earlier? And what they found is that because there's always this synergistic balance and mutualistic relationship between nutrients in our body. Taking too much vitamin D in the absence of vitamin A can be problematic. Taking, taking too much vitamin D in the absence of vitamin K can be problematic. And maybe some of these people were dealing with uh, actually getting too much in supplemental form, which is not something you have to worry about if you're getting it from the sun. So how do you, right. So if in doubt, just get sun. I always tell people on my Snapchat, or I'm always filming myself out in the sun saying, make sure you get at least 15 minutes of direct sunlight a day to raise your vitamin D levels. For guys in particular, it can raise your testosterone levels, which is great. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and like vitamin A... Your, oh, sorry. Even, even at your desk right now, if you wanted to, you could get a Sperti vitamin D lamp. It's like 400 bucks and it's got bulbs that are all UVB, which is the kind that actually helps your body to synthesize vitamin D. So you could be soaking up UVB rays right now, synthesizing vitamin D and getting it through a more natural pathway, even while you're indoors. What's it called? The, the vitamin D lamb? What's the brand name? Sperity, S-P-E-R-T-I. S-P-E-R-T-Y? Uh, T-I. T-I, Sperity. They've got two. They've got one that's the, it's called the Fuji and they've got one that's the vitamin D lamp. The vitamin D lamp is the one that I recommend in the book. Okay, cool. Uh, nice one. Okay. I'll just quickly... Uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up in just a second, but I wanted to show you, I've also taken some vitamin C. I've got uh, a little bit of zinc. I, had a, I think I had a, like a busted lip at one point and someone told me, take zinc, it'll improve it. And then I've got um, some uh, magnesium. And then uh, this is super ginkgo that someone gave me as a, as a, 
as a, as a gift here, which is potency herbs. Um, so, so yeah, what are your thoughts on any, any of those? Well, it's all in the context of what, what are your objectives and goals? Um, with, with vitamin C, for example, like, you know, a lot of, a lot of people don't realize that most vitamin C, um, ascorbic acid is, is derived from GMO corn. So we're taking high dose vitamin C that's derived from GMO corn. And yet at the, in the same breath, we're trying to avoid GMOs. Um, I recommend for vitamin C, I usually go with either like now brand true C, something that comes from like amla fruit or rose hips or um, even liposomal vitamin C, like Seeking Health has some pretty good ones. Um, or if you want one for people that benefit from high dose vitamin C, like 2,000 to 5,000 milligrams a day, uh, there's a company that produces a, a patented form called Qualis C, Q-U-A-L-I dash C. Like Doctor's Best is, is one of the, um, that's the, the brand that I use. And those are the ones that I recommend because you don't, quality does matter. It matters with food. It matters with your workouts. It matters with your supplements. And um, the last thing we want to be doing is trying to do something good for us, getting, getting a powerful antioxidant like vitamin C, and then find out it's a company that's trying to maximize their profits and they're deriving it from GMO corn. So quality or doctor's best is good for vitamin C, right? That's, that's what I use most of the time. Sometimes I'll work in some liposomal vitamin C. It's just a little bit more expensive um, for a lower dose. Okay. And then, uh, and then magnesium. I know that, um, I've heard people talk about how everyone's, every human on the planet is magnesium deficient. So I've taken, started taking a few of these pills. These, uh, this is called, uh, the brand is called Solgar, chelated magnesium, supports nerve and muscle function, um, 250 tablets. Yeah. Any thoughts on those ones? Yeah. Uh, with the, the two things that I see holding people back with getting the best results from magnesium were like, they'll try it and they'll be like, I tried magnesium. It didn't do anything. It's usually that they're taking it in a form that's not bioactive. I usually recommend magnesium malate or magnesium glyconate. Those two forms are best utilized by the body. How, and, do, you sell, how do you spell the first part? Magnesium what? Uh, magnesium malate, M-A-L-A-T-E. Or, um, the, or the other form is magnesium glyconate, G-L-Y-C-I-N-A-T-E. And um, a really good one that's reasonably priced is like Cal brand magnesium glyconate. Um, so, so that's one is that they're taking the wrong form and uh, the body just isn't able to utilize it the, the way that um, would, would result in a, in a physical and perceived difference. Uh, the other is that they're not taking enough. So like the RDA has been 400 milligrams of magnesium. Most of the, the practitioners that I work with and from what I'm seeing with clients is when I put clients around a thousand milligrams a day, that's when they really thrive and they start really? noticing big differences, lower, st less stress, um, feeling more relaxation, better bowel movements, particularly in women. A lot of women deal with constipation. And then when we up their magnesium to around a thousand milligrams a day, some of those problems start, start to subside, particularly when it's done alongside increasing their fiber intake. All right. So yeah, I'm looking at this now. It says four tablets equals 400 milligrams. So you would probably be 10 tablets to get to a thousand, but even then it's not what you're suggesting, which is the magnesium uh, malate or glycinate. So yeah. And, and if you wanted to at some time, I'd be happy to go over some stuff with you and we could look at, we could do a health assessment and you could tell me what your goals are. And then I could make some recommendations and, and things and we could kind of build out like a quick back of the napkin. Uh, cool. Sounds good, Anthony. Well, there you go. So there were some uh, more than a few ways to handle your stress. Um, stay away from bad food, obviously. Move the body. Deep breathing. We talked about the Wing Hof method. Uh, cold showers uh, are very good for you um, to relax you. I obviously was doing that wrong. I'm like, come on, suck it up, James. I should just kind of relax and chill out. Um, connect Cheer yourself on. Give yourself a pat on the back. Yeah. <laughs> good job, James. You're crushing it. This is uh, hard. Walk barefoot on grass, you know, like I so said, take your shoes off and uh, walk on the grass or lay down on the grass sometimes. Um, uh, make sure you're taking the right supplements for you. So eat more DHA, uh, magnesium. You need want more vitamin A and vitamin K. Uh, wild caught fish is obviously going to be excellent for you. We talked about a spurty or a spurty vitamin D lamp. If you're not getting enough sun, make sure you get out there and get uh, direct sunlight. Otherwise, you can grab a vitamin D lamp. Um, and then, uh, you know, vitamin C and some uh, magnesium. I think we covered, covered a fair few things there, there Anthony. We covered, we covered some decent ground. 
All right. So Anthony De Clementi, look out for his book. It's the Biohacker's Guide to Upgraded Energy and Focus. Where do we find more about you, Anthony? We have uh, the sites being put up as we speak. It's going to be at biohackingsecrets.com. And, um, and that's where you'll be able to get the book. And we're, we're giving away the book for free. So uh, you guys just take care of the shipping costs. Tell us where to send it and we'll send you the book. And it's, uh, as you can see here, it's, it's pretty robust. We've got 511 wow. pages of my best stuff. Nice. Awesome. There you go. So biohackingsecrets.com. And uh, Anthony De Clementi, that's D-I-C-L-E-M-E-N-T-I. Are you on social media, Anthony? Where do we find you? I am, yeah. I'm on, I'm on the book face. I'm on, uh, I've started trying to do Twitter a little bit more, a um, little bit of Instagram. But if, if you just search Anthony De Clementi, it, more so Facebook, that's kind of where I throw a lot of stuff up. And, um, and, and that's the best place to start. All right, there you go. So make sure you check out Anthony's book. You can get it for free at biohackingsecrets.com. Anthony, this has been great. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you having me. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, go ahead and leave a review now. Your reviews uh, really help me out. Uh, and do share this with anyone else who you think might benefit uh, from this episode. Catch you on the next one. Social skills. Why do you have a party like you just threw, Ty Lopez? Why do you do it? Well, let's backtrack for a second. With James Swanick, he brought his woman, and I 